Safi was the youngest victim of the Manchester Arena terror attack. Also tonight, Safi Roussos should have been celebrating her ninth birthday today. Instead, her family are preparing for her funeral. Safi, as I'm sure you know, was the youngest victim of the Manchester Arena attack. Her family have been devastated by their loss, but they say the flowers and messages of sympathy from loved ones and strangers have helped them through their darkest days. Well, our chief reporter Dave Guest is in their hometown of Leyland for us this evening. Dave. Dave, thanks very much indeed. Next tonight, a builder is being praised for his courage after running into a burning flat to save the lives of its occupants. Tony Cantwell was the first at the scene of the explosion in Hyde this morning. Two people injured in the blast are tonight being treated in hospital. Our reporter Eunice Muller has spent the afternoon at the scene. Brave man, well done, mm -hmm. Tony. Now, a teenager who blinded a boy in one eye after attacking him with scissors during a college lesson has been jailed for nine years. Now, Muslim communities are being urged to tackle sexist attitudes in the wake of the Rochdale grooming case. Nazir Afsal, who helped to bring those responsible to justice, says that too many Muslims blame the victims of sex attacks rather than the perpetrators. Mr Afsal, who headed the Crown Prosecution Service in the North West at the time of the court case, is himself a Muslim. He was speaking after a BBC documentary about the Rochdale case. Stuart Flinders reports. Well, joining us now is Mohammed Shafiq, Chief Executive of the Rochdale-based Ramadan Foundation, who also features in that documentary last night. Thank you very much for Good coming in. Um, uh, Nazir Afsal says too many Muslims still blame the grooming victims for the sexual exploitation they suffered. And as we saw on the street there, just one of the people that Stuart spoke to agreed. What's your opinion? Just sexist. You believe that there is a racist Absolutely. element Absolutely. Well. And I've been pretty consistent since 2000, white girls. Um, well, and, and in some cases, people are excusing the rape of children. I'm sorry, a child under the age of 16 mm. cannot consent to sexual activity. So how do you confront that then with that small minority uh, in the community that, that isn't getting that, that is still racist and sexist? Uh, you know, I live in Rochdale. I talk to people within the Pakistani community in Rochdale in a position than we were uh, back in 2012. You see, a, a, you know, a strong... As you said, you have been saying these things for a long time. Have you suffered personally? Because a lot of people will be angry and upset by what you're saying. They might even say that you've helped the cause of the far right and anti-Muslim group. Directed towards these evil men, not me. We've seen um, a drama now about the Rochdale case. We've seen now a documentary. Do you believe that, that things like this can make a difference, that they will get in of the public? I... Mohammed Shafiq, thank you very much for Thanks coming in. Ball. Nice to see you. Right, still to come on this evening's Northwest tonight. Let's get some sports news now. Uh, football first of all. Preston North End have appointed the former Norwich City coach. Alec it looked bad, didn't it? The uh, Open Golf Championship gets underway at Royal Birkdale in a fortnight's time. Today was final qualifying. Yeah, it's the last chance for dozens of tour players, amateurs and club professionals to join the star players in golf's biggest tournament, as Stuart Pollitt reports. It's going to be very exciting. Very good. Yes. Now, 20 years ago, Dave and Louise Darlington bought a rundown cottage on a third of an acre of land in the Cheshire countryside and set about creating a garden from scratch. But they didn't stop there. No, they've bought a little more land and two decades on, they've now got 10 acres, including a stunning wildflower meadow. Which you can see some fantastic flowers in it. Abby Jones has been to meet them for the latest in her gardening series. You've been doing a bit of gardening, haven't you? Yes, but nothing like that. I can't believe they said they do all that themselves. Incredible. I struggle with a little corner. You've not got a Japanese pagoda then in your garden? <sighs> Obviously, don't we all? Not room. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Bo Dermott was runner-up on Britain's Got Talent last year, everyone realised that she'd got a good voice. Now it's insured for a million pounds because she's got a record deal. Yeah, really? Bo's also going to be part of a big cancer charity fundraiser in Liverpool later this year. And she's got a really personal reason for taking part, as Mark Edwardson reports. Oh, she's got a remarkable voice. I can't imagine who beat her. She's no, no. winner. I mean, you don't watch Absolutely. Prince Got Talent. No, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> and good luck, <laughs> good, luck to, uh, good luck to Ian as well. Yes, uh, yeah. and we'll let you know about that charity um, fundraiser that she's doing it's as well. It's on the well. other side, isn't it? I never watch anything on the other side. Yes. Um, right, Eno. How is the weather looking? 
Roger, how could you ask Annabelle that on air? It's yes. very difficult to sleep at the moment. Beautiful isn't it? daytime weather for gardening, though. Yes, <laughs> yes. He, he knows a bit gutted now. She didn't realise working for the BBC, you're not allowed to watch any no. other channel. You know, you're going to have to cancel your Sky Are we Sports not allowed subscription. To? No, I no. didn't know that. No more BT Sport for you, Eno. Well, I there's no reason to watch any other channel. Is what we mean, isn't there? Obviously. Have a so watch us later at ten thirty, please. <laughs> bye bye. They probably won't now. <laughs> no.